Joining us now is Rolf Winkler, reporter at the Wall Street Journal. Rolf, a huge, huge scoop for you, of course, that Elon Musk is launching a new venture, Neuralink, which could eventually add implants into our brains in order to download and upload thoughts. So explain exactly what Elon Musk is doing here in the near term and how this might evolve more longer term. Thanks a lot, Kristen, uh, also for having me. So this is something Elon has been teasing dating back to last summer. He's talked about a technology he calls neural lace. This idea that, you know, to keep up with the advancements of artificial intelligence, we need to add a layer of artificial intelligence to ourselves. Uh, so basically we can say, uh, type as fast as we think, you know, give a direct interface with the computer you're typing on every day anyway. Um, but plug it into your brain, more or less. This is a technology that, uh, so, so now what we know, so he's already teased that. What we know now is that he's actually uh, started a company called Neuralink to pursue this idea, a company he registered last year. He has hired some experts. Uh, and he's really starting to, uh, you know, put, put, put some form behind, behind this idea of his. Right, Ralph. Specifically, we know Elon Musk has said that he's planning on financing really the majority of this company himself, but also using some capital against his other companies. So should investors in Tesla and perhaps even Solar City be a little bit concerned about this new venture? Well, to be sure, he hasn't said anything yet about Neuralink or how he's going to do anything. This is all from uh, my sources. So I, don't, I guess what I think for Tesla or for SpaceX, I think the bigger concern is his bandwidth, really. How much time does this guy have? Uh, by the way, on Wednesday, you guys are going to report on this, I'm sure, he's trying to set a record at SpaceX to relaunch a booster that's already been used. Um, uh, Tesla's trying to get the Model 3 out the door. So in between these, these very difficult, very demanding schedules he has at these other companies, he's also starting this other one, which we understand he's taking a very active role in setting up. He may lead it, he may be the CEO, we don't know for sure, but he's certainly not farming this one out. So if I'm a Tesla, or, or I guess, yeah, sure, a SpaceX investor, it's private, I'm really worried about his bandwidth. Rolf, too, you mentioned five kids among a slew of other things that you just rattled off there, which really does put it in perspective based on your reporting. Based on what your sources were telling you, first it seems like this is going to be used to treat and help with brain disorders and then eventually evolve into something that could just help humans in their everyday lives. But I think about the time frame here and how many times the Wall Street Journal itself has done a story on this. How many times has Elon Musk given us a date and then it's been delayed quite beyond that date? So is there a realistic sense that you get from your sources in terms of what maybe the timeline for this company could look like going forward? Hard to say. The best timeline we have is from Elon himself. Uh, he gave some comments to Vanity Fair, which published an article on Sunday where he talked about neural lace again, and he said, we're about four to five years away from a partial brain interface. Stepping back for a second, uh, my sense with this company is it could be similar to SpaceX and Tesla uh, in, in this way. If you, if you look at SpaceX, for instance, its animating principle is we're going to Mars. That's crazy, right? Well, okay, on the way to getting to that goal, Elon has developed a whole bunch of really interesting rocket technology to deliver satellites to space, a very big market. And he's stolen a whole bunch of market share from a bunch of military industrial guys who said he'd never get a rocket off the ground. Tesla's similar, right? His dream is mass market electric. But on the way there, he's got, he's built the Model S, a pretty great vehicle. For Neuralink, What's probably going to happen is, yeah, sure, in the distant future, we'll have maybe theoretically we'll have a brain in our computer and we'll be augmenting our own capabilities. We'll get 10 more IQ points or whatever. But first, the key thing to keep in mind is there actually is some promise for technology like this to, to cure brain disease. This is what scientists, and I can talk about it in a second if you want me to expand on it, but that is probably the first step here. Who mm -hmm. knows about timeline? That, that, that's difficult to say. Rob, so you're saying the first steps would be something like implants to treat brain disorders, things like that, perhaps epilepsy and major depression. That's kind of where Neuralink would probably start? It's what makes most sense and what Elon has told some people he's going to do. 
for instance, Brian Johnson is another entrepreneur in Silicon Valley, founder of Braintree. He's pumping $100 million into a company called Kernel, which wants to do something very similar. Uh, he says he's spoken to Elon, and basically the way he describes the pathway is, look, first, if you're going to want to put electrodes into people's brains, you probably got to get FDA approval. That's, it's hard to do uh, tests on humans unless, first, you've got a reason to do tests on humans, right? And to do that, you've got to have uh, some sort of clinical indication, some, some sort of medical problem you want to try to solve. In this case, scientists are pretty excited about the possibility of doing, uh, coming up with a smarter uh, brain stimulation device along the lines of what people already use very successfully for Parkinson's patients. That deep brain stimulation, it's very dumb. It only sends, it doesn't really modulate based on signals your brain is giving you, right? It basically just sends a direct signal, what's called a, an open loop signal to your brain to help deal with symptoms. If you came up with a closed loop system, something that took signals from the brain and then modulated what, what signal it was sending back, you could start to solve the other diseases potentially. That is, that is the hope here. And scientists in the field very fired up about the possibilities. And we know, too, there were some scientists, or researchers rather, noted here in your article, Rolf, and this company registering in California as a medical research company last July, according to your reporting. I mean, I, I, when I think about putting this in perspective, too, I mean, how much trouble do investors give Jack Dorsey for running Twitter and Square at the same time? And just going back to the big picture here, I mean, Elon Musk would have his hands in so many different components. He must, I would, I would imagine, to get this thing off the ground, there's going to be a need to be a really solid team in place, probably. Absolutely. He's going to need to get a lot of people in place. Uh, he's already hiring a bunch of neuroscientists to help him out. When you think about will investors push back, I mean, I guess guys like us can make, write headlines about how investors are worried about this thing, but look at the share price of Tesla. Look at the valuation it has relative to the cash it, the cash it doesn't generate, right? Or SpaceX. This is a company that's been marked up significantly uh, by mutual funds that hold the shares relative to where it last raised money. People are very excited to buy anything that has Elon Musk attached to it. So it's almost like Jeff Bezos. On one hand, people complain that Amazon has no profits, but the people keep people keep buying Amazon stock. They keep valuing it incredibly highly. So, if anything, you know the, the the money 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 talks. And investors who are willing to want to buy stock in these companies, mm -hmm. they don't seem to be expressing any kind of concern right now. Okay. All right, Rolf Winkler, a great story in the Wall Street Journal, a reporter there. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you guys for having me.